Okay, so now we will be tackling about the topic of group frequency distribution of inter interval data. So basically, we are now um, trying to have the presentation of group data. So when you see the group data, so a group data is, uh, previously defined is data that are um, present that are presented uh, by frequency distribution. So the very first uh, way to group data is to um, tally them or to present them in a frequency distribution table. So usually if you are uh, dealing with uh, data, the discrete or continuous data, so they will come in a manner like this. So this is how they will be um, presented. So we have given the scores in a mathematics test. So we have the frequency. So we are going to do a frequency table of the set of data. So we have a 47, 57. So this if you are going to uh, to count the number of data we have or the, or the total frequency so this is one two three four five okay. so you have one it's just count this one here so this is one two three four five then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 5 by 8, so that would be 40. So you have a total of 40 um, data. So if you are going to make a frequency table or frequency distribution of this data, so it will be looking like this because we are going to group this data. So it will be looking like this one. Okay. So this is the frequency distribution. Okay. So we have to the table so this, this is the frequency distribution of group data so they are presented in intervals so we have this one so first we are going to have because this table is contains lot of lots of information so I'm first going to define each one so we have here these columns here this one Maybe it's just move this table okay, so that we could have this one. Okay, so here these are called intervals. So we have our intervals or sample as a size interval or um, or number of intervals or class number of intervals, but for um for just to make the uh, the nomenclature of this one uh, uniform, so we just call it interval. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So our interval, so let's just present, uh, represent that to one a small i. So this is equal to 15. Now we have also the um, we have also the this one so we have the real limits so the, re, the real limits are limits that are in um, continuous so they are they, they can be represented uh, as a decimal uh, number so we so that we have say 0.5 in each one so they are called re, re, real limit so in every interval we have the so-called lower real limits we have rlr so rlr so that will be lower real limit then this one so this is higher so this is hrl or we have the high or sometimes you can have it as you so that it, it will not be sound uh, somewhat uh, Difference. So URL, so th this is will be the upper real limit. So each of the interval has its own upper and real limit. Then the number between the upper and the real limit, so the upper and the lower real limit, so their number, so the number between them is uniform for every interval and they are called the they are called 
the size of the interval. So interval size. Okay, so let's just erase this one. We have here. They are called interval size. So let's just represent that one as maybe let's represent this one as so I sub S. Okay, so it's just how we would represent that one. The I sub S. Now in this part, this column, this is the integral limit. So the integral limit are the discrete limit. So when you see discrete, they are discontinuous. So they, they are not represented by a decimal number. Or they, not, they, they do not contain the decimal number. In this column is the tally. So the tally is where you are going to uh, count. Uh, count how many um, number of uh, data fall under this uh, interval. For example, for for this interval, so 80 to 84 or 79.5 to 84, there, are, there is only one data that fall in this one. And this tally, in this study, we could get the frequency. So because there is only one data that fall in this one, so the frequency is one, so on and so forth. The midpoint, so midpoint is the midpoint between the lower, the integral, uh, lower integral limit and the upper low, upper integral limit so the midpoint between 80 and 84 is 82 so you could have that one as um, 84 plus 80 divided by 2 and then you come up with 82 okay and the midpoint the the difference between each midpoint for example this one the difference of the next one is 5 because the because our interval size is for this one this is five so the going back to the real limit so this the, the the difference between these two numbers is five this is also five five then from here to here so from the first interval to the second interval the difference between the lower the lower the lower limit of the first inter interval and the lower limit of the second interval is also five so their midpoint their difference is also 5. Now for the integral limits, so you may say it is only 4, but you will count, uh, you will you will include in the count the number uh, or, or the number itself. So for example, 80 to 84, so you have 80, so that is 1, 81, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, and that would be 5. So that is how the, and that is why the interval size is very important now we have the cf so this is the cumulative so my page is always waiting on the uh, screen so we have cf so this is the cumulative so we have the cumulative frequency less than then we have also the CF which is presented this way so this is the cumulative I believe cumulative is 1M only so cumulative frequency greater than okay. So basically CF less than is the total number of frequency from the lower limit from the lower interval so you are going to count that one. So for example this one this is one then you will add to the next frequency so that is two up to the highest or up to the um, upper interval this one for T. Then the CF greater than, so it is the reverse, this 1 to 40. So this is to see uh, what is the distance of each of the interval from each other or from the total frequency. So, in, so this is very useful because we are going to use this one to get the CPF. 
CPF. So there are two types of so CPF. So we have the CPF less than. So this is the cumulative percentage frequency. Uh, cumulative. So this is you. Cumulative percentage frequency. So this is less than. Then the other one is CPF uh, greater than. So we have cumulative percentage so we are almost running out of screen to write so greater that then we have the last one that is RF so that will be the relative frequency so in the RF you are going to select the most likely midpoint or the most likely middle interval for this one and if you are then you will get the difference of the cumulative frequency cumulative frequency um, cumulative percentage frequency greater than so for example this is the one we are going to select this interval so this will be zero then you have 47 minus 30 so the 17 up then low so that is how we are going to get our RF or the relative frequency. So this will describe how the, the middle or the so-called median is, is um, distant from the other frequencies. Okay, so that is the parts of our frequency distribution table so in the next video we are going to um, we are going to have this one we're going to do our own um, frequency distribution table so this one by trying to make the frequency table of this given example so this frequency distribution table of this is this one but we are going to do uh, to do this one ourselves so that we could know how the process of getting this one this uh, frequency distribution table so thank you for watching and as always keep on studying